It was just another ordinary day. I woke up in the morning, got ready for work, and left the house. Rachel's distant behavior had been bothering me lately, but I kept convincing myself it was just work stress. After all, we had been married for 18 years, and I thought these things happened sometimes. However, the doubt inside me was growing with each passing day. When I tried to talk to her, she either brushed it off or changed the subject. But today, that unexpected moment was about to happen. It was around noon, and as usual, I was driving towards the grocery store. When I stopped at a red light, another car pulled up beside me, signaling for me to roll down my window. The driver told me my tire was flat. I stepped out, and sure enough, there was a screw in my tire. Luckily, I was close to Walmart, so I drove there. Little did I know what was about to happen as I tried to fix the tire. After fixing the tire and just about to get back into the car, I saw a huge truck. A tall man with blonde hair and cowboy boots got out. Then, from the passenger seat, a woman with dark hair, someone familiar, stepped out. Rachel, the woman I had been married to for years. I froze, not knowing what to do. They were smiling at each other, and she was holding his hand. My heart almost stopped. Jerry Garner, I remembered his name in an instant, a man from Rachel's workplace. What were you doing with him, Rachel? Questions raced through my mind. As I started following them, they drove to our house. They parked the car in the garage, and the door closed. I sat in my car for half an hour, unable to move, still in shock. After a while, they came out of the house again, laughing and looking as if nothing had happened. I hid my face behind a file folder, and they passed by me, completely unaware. I went inside my house, feeling like something was wrong, but nothing seemed out of place. I went upstairs, and the bed was neatly made. My heart sank once more. What should I do? My mind was a mess. I sat there for a while, then remembered I had to pick up Toby from school. What would I tell him? Toby was waiting for me at the school gate. When I looked into his eyes, my heart broke even more. He looked at me with his dark hair, olive skin, and those mesmerizing hazel eyes, so much like his mother's. Dad, are you okay? He asked, looking at me with concern. I need to tell you something, but let's go to the park first. We'll talk there, okay? I said, my voice trembling, and he noticed. Okay, but I'm really scared, he whispered. We sat at the park, and I didn't even know how to hold him. He was my everything, but I had to tell him. I took a deep breath and told him everything I had seen. Toby's eyes filled with tears, but he was strong, much braver than I was. We need to talk to mom, he said, determined. This can't be that simple. We need to find out the truth, Toby said firmly. When we got home, Rachel greeted us at the door, smiling as usual, acting like nothing had happened. Should we get takeout for dinner, she asked with a slight smile. Toby looked at his mother's fake smile and said, Mom, we need to talk. Rachel realized something was wrong, but there was still no sign of concern on her face. Of course, honey. Is everything okay, she asked, as if everything was normal. How was your day? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm, as if everything was fine. Rachel averted her gaze, clearly trying to figure out what was happening. The usual, Rachel said, raising her eyebrows. It was really busy at the office. Actually, a company representative brought us lunch. It was a tough day, really. Toby turned to his mother coldly. Were you at the office all day? he asked. A moment of hesitation crossed Rachel's face, but she quickly recovered. Yes, of course. What's going on? Why are you asking these questions? This was the moment I had been waiting for. Rachel I said, unable to hide the coldness in my voice, you weren't at our house this afternoon with Jerry Garner, were you? Suddenly, everything stopped. Rachel's face turned pale. She tried to find her words, but her voice trembled. What? What are you talking about? Of course not. I was at the office. What? What are you accusing me of? 
she couldn't string her words together. Toby turned to his mother and quietly said, Mom, don't lie. Dad saw you. Rachel dropped her gaze and whispered, Yes, it's true. I was with Jerry. How long has this been going on? I asked. Rachel struggled to speak for a while. I don't know what to say. While working with Jerry, we connected. I couldn't control myself. I fell in love. How could she betray me so easily after all the trust one had placed in her? Toby looked at his mother with the same shock. What about me, he asked, his eyes filling with tears. He couldn't believe his mother had hurt him so deeply. Rachel turned to Toby, but there was no sign of regret in her eyes. Toby, everything will be fine. Jerry is really a great person, and you'll love him. He even has a beautiful house by the lake, and he'll adore you. Toby's anger was building. Do you seriously think that? You think you're going to build a new life with this guy, and I'm just going to go along with it? I don't want anything to do with you or that man. I'm staying with dad. Rachel realized there was no way she could win Toby over. Then I turned to Rachel. I'm done with you, I said, each word hitting harder than the last. You're going to leave this house in three days. Three days, or I'll have you thrown out. Rachel froze, she didn't know what to say. Then she whispered, where will you send me? I have nowhere to go. I looked at her harshly. I don't care. Stay wherever you want. Go to Jerry's if you like, but in three days, you'll be out of here. Tears streamed down Rachel's face. Oliver, you don't have to be this harsh. I, I never wanted to hurt you. I didn't want it to be this way. My anger flared. Do you even realize what you've done? You deceived me, destroyed our family, hurt our daughter, and you still think you deserve happiness? You feel no pain, do you? Everything's fine because you fell in love? Rachel collapsed to the floor, crying, but it didn't affect me this time. At this point, all I felt was emptiness. The pain and anger inside me had been replaced by a dark silence. When Toby and I returned home, I had only one thought in mind, making sure my daughter would be okay. I would do everything to keep her away from this mess. That night, Toby and I sat quietly in the kitchen. We ate leftover pizza from breakfast, but I didn't have the strength to talk, and I wasn't in the state to answer Toby's questions. Dad, why did mom become like this? We were always a happy family, right? Toby asked, staring down at the floor. I took a deep breath. Finding the right words to answer his question was incredibly hard. Toby, sometimes people change. Your mom. She might have lost herself. Maybe she doesn't care about us like she used to, or maybe she really did fall in love with Jerry. But whatever the case, you are my everything. I'm here, and I'll never leave you. Toby's eyes welled up. I'll never leave you either, Dad. I don't understand Mom anymore, but I'll always stay with you. Within three days, Rachel was gone. She tried to say a few words about how she and Jerry were going to start a new life, but I wasn't listening anymore. After Rachel left, Toby and I started to establish our own routine. The first few weeks were hard. Toby had to return to school and his friends, but I did my best to support him. Sometimes, at night, he would come to me crying. He couldn't accept what his mother had done. Dad, I miss mom, but I don't want to see her, he said one night, sitting at the edge of my bed I held him in my arms. Sweetheart, whatever you're feeling is completely normal. Your mom is still your mom. You might not stop loving her, even if you're angry with her. This isn't your fault, and all these feelings are completely normal. No matter what your mom has done, I'm sure she still loves you. Weeks turned into months. Rachel was completely out of our lives. Her relationship with Jerry ended shortly after. While Toby occasionally saw his mother, their relationship was never the same. The trust in Toby's eyes was gone, and he only trusted me now. 
One day, as Toby came home from school, he turned to me and said, Dad, I never thought our lives would turn out like this, but maybe we're happier this way. His words made me think deeply. Yes, maybe Rachel was gone from our lives, but the bond between my daughter and me had only grown stronger. The void left by Rachel's departure gradually gave way to peace. Toby and I would spend weekends by the lake, take long walks, and sometimes laugh as we reminisced about old times. Every moment I spent with her reminded me of how precious life truly is. One summer day, we decided to have a picnic with Toby's close friend, Sabrina, and her mother, Julie. Meeting Julie opened a new chapter in my life. Sabrina was Toby's best friend, and Julie was her mother. Throughout the picnic, as I spent more time with Julie, I realized how genuine and warm she was. From that day on, Julie and I began to see each other more often, and over time, we started to develop feelings for each other. Months passed, and my relationship with Julie deepened. Toby supported this relationship. In fact, he and Sabrina would often tease us, saying, you two make the perfect couple. A year later, while walking by the lake with Julie, I pulled out a small ring from my pocket. She looked at it, her eyes welling up. Julie, thank you for the happiness and peace you brought into my life. Will you marry me? I asked. Julie smiled through her tears and said, yes. At that moment, I realized I had left the hardest chapter of my life behind and was now stepping into a new, happy future. Toby and Sabrina were thrilled about the marriage, life was getting better for them too. As for Rachel, she was now just a distant memory in our lives. All ties with her were severed, and that was for the best. Toby, Sabrina, Julie, and I, we were now a family.